The national theme for Hispanic Heritage Month for 2023 is Somos Somos Uno. At Tennyson Middle School, we've decided to make a video project that um, has participants among our faculty and our staff where they tell you and they share with you their experiences as American-born Latinos and as Hispanics in the United States, especially their um, words of advice and encouragement that they would share with you as a middle school student and they wish that they had shared with themselves as middle school students. Hi, my name is Brenda Gaitan Avina. I'm one of the science teachers here at Tennyson Middle School. Um, a little bit about me, I am um, originally from Mexico. Uh, my parents um, immigrated here when I was six years old. Um, I went to all the schools here in Waco. I graduated from University High School, uh, graduated from MCC, and eventually uh, Texas Tech with my bachelor's. So um, my experience as a Mexican American living in the United States uh, has been quite a ride. Um, there's a lot of things I learned early on. Uh, my identity as a Hispanic uh, person of color here was uh, always something that was known to me and something that I uh, really embraced as a child. Uh, being able to communicate with my grandparents and um, in our native language uh, was something that was instilled in me very young. So I always encourage my students who are bilingual whether it be Spanish or any other language, to really embrace it because at, at, in the end, it is going to help you tremendously and give you so many more opportunities in life. So my name is Joe Armenta and I teach at Abbott here at Tennyson. If I had the opportunity to talk to middle school me, I would tell myself to believe and uh, believe that working hard and chasing your dreams and uh, working diligently at school and in athletics and taking care of my family and it would all pay off someday. Um, I wish I saw more examples of that growing up because I think I would have believed. So now I try and make sure that I show that to family, students, my community so they can see that example. Um, speaking to all the young Hispanic people out there, what advice I'd give to them on being successful is to be tenacious, to be hardworking, to emulate all of the past generations of Hispanics who all work hard and believe in community and family and faith and um, how it's gonna make us all stronger together and connect uh, throughout generations. So work hard, work hard, and have pride in how hard you work. Thank you. Hello, my name is Mr. Meza. I am one of the assistant band directors here at Tennessee. I am a first generation American Latino. My parents were born in Ecuador. This is a little tiny country in South America where the equator runs its line through. My parents immigrated here from Ecuador about 30 years ago, and then they decided to settle down before they had me. As a first generation student, I, it was really difficult to get both my cultural uh, identities to be in the classroom and just in, in society. As a Hispanic and American, it was difficult to kind of maneuver which one I kind of wanted to represent. and as a child and student, it was very difficult for me to kind of fit in. So I wanted to quickly say this message to all the Hispanic identifying students to really embrace that and be proud of that. Just because you are in a community filled with a bunch of other uh, races and ethnicities doesn't mean that you should try to fit in. I think that's the most important thing I value as being a Hispanic American, just being proud of who I am. I like to play music and listen to music and also teach music that's about my, my cultural um, background. So I think it's very important as students to always think about where your parents are from and that gives you a base of inspiration of who you want to be in life. Thank you. Hi, my name is Jessica Lopez. I'm 
My name is Alyssa Lopez. I teach here at Tennessee Middle School. I teach 7th and 8th grade math. And, um, my experience as a Hispanic uh, is different than my parents. My parents went to a school that had a mainly Hispanic population. I went to a school that did not have much. Um, so I got to experience that as a, in school, in middle school, that I was supposed to perform lower than my peers because I was considered Hispanic that I was supposed to projectively do lower. Um, and so they were very surprised when I excelled, when they decided I was going to perform just because I was Hispanic. Um, and then going into Spanish class, I didn't know Spanish, so I am a person who does not speak Spanish. My parents don't speak Spanish. Um, but my peers assumed I knew the answers just because I was his from Hispanic descent, um, which is not correct. You don't inherit a language, you learn it. Um, so I thought that was very prejudiced to think just because I am Hispanic that I know Spanish. Um, my advice to students to help them succeed that are also Hispanics is don't be discouraged of your culture. Be proud of where you come from because honestly, your culture is something you should be proud of because I feel like if you're ashamed of who you are, you don't get to be your true self. People don't get to see who you are. So having people who put you down is not the best thing in your life. Um, and I think just don't be ashamed of where you come from because where you come from matters. Your parents did something to get you here. Your grandparents, they all did this so we could have a better life. So to me, I think the best advice is just to be proud of who you are. Hello, my name is Mr. Garcia and I teach choir here at Tennyson Middle School. Um, something that was very different about the experience between me and my parents was when my parents were growing up, um, being Hispanic was acceptable, but speaking Spanish wasn't so much a good thing for them. In fact, my mom was actually sent to a special education class in uh, elementary school because they thought she couldn't speak English. Um, it's because uh, someone had spoke to her in Spanish and she responded politely in Spanish. My grandmother had to go up there and be like, she actually speaks English, speak English, and then my mom did. Um, so being bilingual actually wasn't seen as as a positive thing. Now, uh, what that meant was when I was growing up, they didn't want to teach me Spanish. They wanted me to speak without an accent. They didn't want to be stigmatized because of our native tongue. Um, but now we find that actually there are jobs that are actually looking for bilingual people who pay more for that language. So it was something that my parents did with good intentions, but actually ended up kind of working against me and something that we should have just maybe held on to and been proud of our language and our, our, able to, our ability to be bilingual. So advice I'd give to my middle school self um, really is just to be proud of my heritage. Um, it's interesting, out of my family, uh, we're all Hispanic, but I just happen to have a lot of a, a darker complexion than most of my family, and I always felt very uh, different because of it. Not because my family made me feel that way, but because I just looked very different. Um, what I did was we did a little bit of research and found out that there's actually Filipino heritage, which again is a Hispanic population um, in our bloodline, and that's where I got a lot of my uh, a lot of my physical characteristics from. So I decided that um, as I grew up, I was going to celebrate that Filipino heritage just as much as my Mexican heritage, since it was so visible on me. So to middle school, Mr. Garcia, I would say, hey, your color is beautiful. It's awesome, and you should celebrate it and not be ashamed of it. Love all that. So an interesting fact about me is I can actually trace my lineage back to the Alamo in San Antonio, meaning that I have been a Texan, uh, my, my family's been Texan, it's been Mexican, it's been American. We have this uh, awesome just combination of cultures coming together. Um, I was born in San Antonio just like my mother and my father were, and you know, again, their parents before them all the way back to the Alamo. In fact, um, our uh, ancestors fought inside the Alamo for Texas independence. And knowing that about myself, really not only fills me with a lot of pride as a Hispanic person and a Texan, but as an American, as a Mexican-American uh, person, just to know that my family has been through and seen uh, the city of San Antonio and the state of Texas and just the Hispanic culture, how it's influenced the state itself, and it's something that I, I, I carry very near and dear to myself. I'm Mrs. Cannon. I am your campus librarian. I learned to speak English when I was five years old and I discovered I was Hispanic when I arrived at the University of Florida at age 17 with two suitcases because growing up in Panama everyone was Panamanian just like me. There wasn't a, you're Hispanic because you're Panamanian. So um, when I discovered I was Hispanic I was 
uh, truly Hispanic and that I had the responsibility of being Hispanic was my freshman year when I decided to skip a class and one of my friends yelled at me in the hallway. She explained to me that from her perspective, I was wasting my opportunity for an education. Mind you, I'd missed one class, just one, but it made an impact. Um, she also went on to tell me that as Hispanic women, we really owe ourselves and our community every, uh, to take every opportunity to succeed. And education is a route to success. So she made me feel really bad, but she also made me think. And it was at that moment I decided I was going to squeeze every single drop out of any educational opportunity that came my way. So I would tell middle school you and middle school me, education is power. Education opens doors. Education is free in this country. Education can only do so much if you don't put your part. You have to, in pure, pure Panamanian, apretar las nalgas and focus and get uh, your grind on and get your studying going and learn as much as you can from every opportunity. Um, half of U.S. born Hispanics are under the age of 19. That's you guys. If you guys want to honor the struggle of your ancestors, you need to make the most of your education. If you want to honor the struggles of prior American generations that got this country going, you need to make the most of your education because we are the fastest growing population in the United States. Hello, my name is Victor Gaona. I'm a Spanish teacher here at Tennyson Middle School. I've been here for nine years. Um, what would I use to describe the Hispanic community or the American Latino community? I would say resilience. Um, as a, as a Mexican-American, right, born in Mexico, um, with my parents coming over here whenever I was uh, one years old, it just showed me a lot of resilience on their part making the sacrifices, being able to come over here, knowing that it would be difficult, um, but they raised me with a lot of good values, a lot of a good work ethic, and I'm just so proud for, to, be, to be Hispanic. And for me, uh, just resilience, being able to be resilient in all kinds of different ways, uh, whether it be trying to learn a different language, trying to assimilate, and all those things, in which my parents are still um, so grateful and thankful of for the opportunity that uh, that America has given us, and I'm just so so thankful for that. Um, well, how was my experience different from my parents? My experience with uh, being a first generation uh, Mexican American was uh, it was difficult at times. Uh, I felt like um, with my parents not knowing English, it was difficult for me because I was uh, I was. I had the task of uh, having to interpret for my parents and kind of have to grow up a little bit faster than the other kids. So that was um, that was different. Um, but at the same time, it was it was very uh, it helped me mature a whole lot faster and be able to see the world a little bit differently. And also just being able to go back to Mexico during the summers, it was really interesting and really eye opening to see how blessed we are here in America to have the things that we have. I remember my first time when we went to Mexico, I asked where the bathroom was and they just pointed outside to the, to a, to a, like a space outside, not knowing that there was no running water, um, there was no toilets. And so for me as a, I think I was like eight or nine years old, that was a complete shock to me. So um, it's just, um, it's something that uh, I was able to see how they lived and how they grew up and how hard they had it. and how I was able to go back and experience those things, which was uh, something that I take back and I tell my kids the same thing, like we're so blessed, we have so so many things and we're just so grateful that my parents were able to bring me over here and that God really just was able to help us throughout that whole time period. Um, 
what would I give my or what advice would I give my give to a middle school youth? I would say to be able to embrace my culture. Um, it's it was difficult uh, to be able to do that, but at the same time, I was um, I was kind of in the in the in the uh, sense of. Uh, I didn't know who I was at the time, uh, in the sense of like, yes, I was born in Mexico, but I was raised here. But being able to grow up in that culture of Mexican culture was really helpful to be able to understand both the Hispanic culture and also the American culture and being able to assimilate. So I feel like I'm blessed to be able to have both, uh, both perspectives and I'm able to empathize with one one uh, one group and also empathize with the other group and so that's really helped me in my career and being able to communicate with uh, with different people and then making them feel like um, that they're that they have a place especially here at Tennyson being able to talk to parents in Spanish and being able to talk to kids and being able to relate to them and their stories how they tell me how you know they go to Mexico they go see their abuela abuela tío tía and uh, I'm like, oh yeah, I remember doing that, or they do this. So um, it just helped me out in my career so much, and I know that it's going to continue to help me uh, to continue to uh, to further my progress in my career. And I'm just super thankful for that.